Hi guys, it's Allie, and today I'm going to be playing a little game that I like to call Bookshelf Roulette. The rules are pretty simple. I just have to choose one little ping pong ball out of this little red bucket. It has four because I have four shelves on my bookshelf. And then choose a number out of this black box that has 11 in them. And they're all numbered except for this one, which is a star, and that means I get to choose. So red means the number of the shelves, and then the number in here correlates to what number it is on the shelf from left to right. The star is there so that I can choose something that maybe comes from a shelf that has more than 10 books on it. And when I do choose, let me put that away, when I do choose a book through this kind of random draw or like bingo board kind of thing, I just have to give a brief description of what the book is about, a brief review of it if I have read it, or if I haven't read it, an explanation as to why I haven't read it yet. And then three, if there's any kind of fun story as to why I have that book or how I got that book, I'll share that with you guys too. So that being said, hopefully the rules all make sense and let's get started. I'm not gonna look because I do have all of them written in Sharpie. Shelf two and what number? Number 10, okay. So I'm gonna go find shelf two, number 10, and we'll talk about it. Bookshelf number two, book number 10, turned out to be Cress from the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I absolutely love this series. It is the third book in the series, which follows a character who, if you can tell by the cover, is meant to resemble and be a bit of a retelling of Rapunzel, which is fitting because Rapunzel is one of my favorite Disney characters. And I really like this book. I can't say too much about what happens in it because it is the third in a series, but the Lunar Chronicles themselves take place in a sci-fi world and follows a series of retellings that all kind of intertwine and intermingle throughout the four books. Uh, Cress is, again, Rapunzel, but the other books are Cinder, which follows Cinderella, Scarlet, which follows the Little Red Riding Hood, and Winter, which follows a Snow White type character. And then there's also a companion novel named Fairest, which follows the Evil Queen. So it is a really interesting book series. Fun story about how I got these books, actually. My professor in my young adult literature class in college would get a lot of books because she was on the board for a lot of different awards and she was well known in kind of the book publishing editing world and so she would get a lot of arcs and she'd get a lot of free books but this professor did not like sci-fi or fantasy whatsoever which i argued with her about that but um anyway she would always just have a bunch of books that she would give out to her students and one day she had an entire box set of the Lunar Chronicles books all in hardcover. I had read them all through um, ebook on my Kindle and I was so excited about it but no one else in the class raised their hands to say that they wanted the books and I was like this is like this is a lot of money's worth of books here and so I raised my hand, I was like, I, I like sci-fi fantasy, I don't know about you guys, so I'll take them. And she was like, yeah, here you go, here they are for free. And I don't know even how much the box set was, but it was quite a lot. And they're all so beautiful and they're all in hardcover. And so I really lucked out with that. I was really excited to get all of those books. So this is that. <laughs> now for the next book on our little bookshelf roulette game. Choose a shelf. Two again. All right. I do have a lot of good books on two, so let's see. If I get ten again, I'm going to laugh. Six. Okay. What is number six? Let's see. 
One, two, three, four, six. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shelf number two, book number six, turned out to be City of Heavenly Fire from the Mortal Instrument series by Cassandra Clare. This is another uh, one of my favorite series, and I. <laughs> really have not much more to say about this particular book because again it is pretty well into a pretty prolonged series and so I don't want to spoil anything but the Mortal Instrument series follows a girl named Clary Frey who finds out through a series of <laughs> misfortunate events that she misfortunate is that a word through a series of unfortunate events her mom goes missing and in a search to find him she finds this group this kind of underground society of people called shadow hunters who fight supernatural beings like werewolves and vampires and demons and things like that and she has to kind of join forces with them in order to find her mom and the story kind of goes from there. On to the next one. So this book is going to be coming from shelf number four. And book number 10. Let's see which one that is. Shelf number four is my shelf for all of my classics, my favorite classics, and also some of my middle grade books. And so number 10 on that shelf turned out to be The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Um, I haven't actually read this book yet. This is a hand-me-down from my brother and he had a bunch of books before he moved out and he gave me a bunch of them and that's part of the reason why I have so many duplicates of classic books. And he had this copy of Catcher in the Rye and gave it to me. It's one of those classics that you know that you should read but just sometimes life gets away from you and you don't. And so, yeah, I haven't read it yet. I believe, isn't this, um, isn't this uh, John Green's favorite book, I think? Or was that something else? But um, anyway, so I do know that I need to and should read this book, but I can't give you a very good synopsis of what it's about because I haven't read it myself. But there you go, there's that one. The next book will be coming from shelf number two again. Oh my lord. And book number star. I can choose whichever one I want. Okay. Ooh, which one do I want to do? Because I got the star, I decided to choose something from shelf number two that is actually the last book on the shelf. And funny enough, a book that I haven't actually read yet, but I think it sounds really interesting and I think the story behind, I, behind how I got it was kind of cool. So I chose The Broken Lands by Kate Milford. And this book is a kind of historical fantasy and it sounded really cool. My professor gave it to me actually because I won an award in college for the English department and when she heard about that she gave me a book from her collection and she chose this. And so it is a young adult like historical fantasy like I said before and I will just read to you what the synopsis is on the back of the book because like I said I haven't read it but I do want to recommend it because it does sound very good. So New York City 1877 a crossroads can be a place of great power, and few crossroads compare to the one being formed by the new bridge connecting Brooklyn and Manhattan. Fifteen-year-old Sam has walked with pride as his family and friends have helped build the engineering marvel. It's one of the things he loves most, though it's far from Coney Island where he hustles cards for a living. It is there, miles from that great crossroads, that Sam first learns about forces of unimaginable evil seeking to bend its power to their advantage. And it is in Coney Island that he first encounters a girl named Jin, a fireworks expert who threatens to blow his world apart in more ways than one. Together, they vow to stop the dark forces bent on attacking New York City. But can two teenagers really prevent creatures far older than the city itself from turning it into a hell on Earth? I just think that sounds really cool, right? I love historical fiction and I also love fantasy and I just think this is a really cool intermingling of that. I also like uh, in the uh, 
Mortal Instruments series that's kind of like an urban fantasy. So this is like a historical urban fantasy. It's really interesting. So I am really looking forward to re reading this one. I haven't yet because it is a bit big, but I'm super excited for this and I just kind of wanted to give it a bit of a shout out with my little freebie. Up next is shelf number three. Okay, we haven't done three yet. And book number eight. Shelf three, book eight. Let's see which one that is. Shelf number three, book number eight, turned out to be Looking for Alaska by John Green. This is, I'm pretty sure, his first novel, and it is a contemporary. It follows a character named Miles, nicknamed Pudge, who is obsessed with last words of famous people and things like that. And he is kind of just bored with his life, so he ends up going to a boarding school where he meets a girl named Alaska, who is kind of a manic pixie dream girl. If you don't know what that is, it's just a female character in books that tends to just be the exact opposite of the sweet, pure, innocent, uh, domestic girl that you see, or like a Mary Sue that you see in a lot of other fiction, but it's so reversed as to almost come full, full circle to where the manic, the manic pixie dream girl's whole purpose in the story is not to actually be a real person but to just be an exciting kind of force in the masculine male the masculine male the masculine main character's life so there's a little bit of wiggle room with this book but i did actually really enjoy it i thought that pudge's obsession with last words was an interesting character uh, trait and had interesting implications on the novel and Overall, I liked it a lot as of filming this this book is about to become a Hulu series It was optioned for a movie years and years ago, but it never actually Went through and now it has gone through but rather than being a movie it is going to be a Hulu um, limited series. So I think that's pretty cool. I'll definitely be checking it out But that was looking for Alaska by John Green Next book will be coming from shelf number three, okay, and book number two, all right, oh wow, okay, <laughs> this is fun. So this book is actually called Sonder Memoirs from my high school back when I was living in Virginia and what it is is an anthology of short stories written by students from the school and it was put together by some teacher who I didn't actually have but it was um, it was put out into the creative writing classes that this was going to be happening and my creative writing teacher came up to me and asked if they could put a short story that I had written for that class into the anthology and so I said yeah and it's actually it's right at the crease so anytime you open it you open it right up to my story and it is called Grandpa's Tomato Garden and it was a narrative non-fiction short story and yeah, so I have that book because it looks like an actual book and it was the first time I was ever officially published in anything other than like a lit magazine and Yes, like this wasn't by an actual publishing company. It was just put together by a teacher, but it looks like a real paperback book and I thought that was so cool and it's so important for a young writer to see their work on a shelf and so it's always been important to me to include my writing on my bookshelf full of other people's writing because it reminds me that I can be on other people's bookshelves someday and it's a really good motivational factor for me so that is why this one is on there and I'm so excited it got pulled that's so cool I got to share that little story with you guys so yes this is my book <laughs> not not individually my book but I'm in this book and so are some other great writers from my high school so cool <laughs> this is Sonder memoirs from my high school
And I think that's where I'm going to end this one for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I definitely enjoyed playing this game and maybe I'll play it again in the future. Maybe I'll play it uh, anytime I kind of organize, reorganize my bookshelves or if I get a new bookshelf or something like that. And I really hope that this can be a game that the whole community can kind of play. I mean, I have here four shelves of books, but I know that there are some of you out there that have like 16 bookshelves with eight shelves each. And I think this would be a really fun kind of game to play. And it would definitely be a cool twist on, you know, bookshelf tours and things like that, that um, have been around booktube lately. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I definitely enjoyed playing. Please let me know if you play this game. I don't know that I would consider this like a tag game, but maybe like a challenge. So I would challenge all of you to do this. And I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, there are three things that you could do that would really help me out. Uh, first, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Second, let me know what you think in the comments. And third, check out my website, wordhamster.com, for courses and contests. When you do any of those things, you are supporting me and my work with young writers. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time.